Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, we are going to walk through the creation of this procedural bridge here for Houdini Engine version 2. We're going to cover things like how to create these handles, right? So you can offset the two sides of the bridge and place it wherever you want. It's basically, you know, the entire placement of the bridge itself. Uh, lets you, you know, put it on any angle or anything like that. Everything updates appropriately. All procedural. Let's actually make it a little bit longer now. There we go. Yeah. And we're going to go walk through, you know, all these different global parameters here. Uh, we have the ability to, you know, change the overall look of the, the hang shape here. That's what I called it. All right. You can change, you know, things like the, the bridge width overall. Um, we have our lower hang intensity here all right which is separate from the upper hang intensity i usually keep it a little bit like that and you know we have control over um, just about every aspect of this uh, we have you know the scale seed here changes the overall min and max scale we have our removal weight so we remove lots of playing so we can basically add them all back in. Yep. You have control over the rotation, individual scale, lots of cool stuff in here. Uh, we have the posts. One of the coolest things here is I go through the technique about how to create the proper vectors for, you know, creating these, these angles here. So this is kind of like the X spread and the ropes all follow appropriately. And then we have the Z spread, so that's how far they lean back, how far they go forward, stuff like that. And uh, we have stuff for all the ropes and the tie downs here, which are these guys. And then finally, I cover um, how to procedurally lay out all your UVs inside of Houdini. So um, we get a pretty good overall you know, layout for the UVs, and that is not that. It is actually this guy. Now, uh, this is kind of a... Um, a quick test uh, using just the UV layout node and I really just wanted to do it to show you how to organize and how to use this to lay out UVs into specific shells. Uh, I'm going to do a follow-up on this and show you guys uh, a better way to do that but it's good to understand how to use that UV layout node um, in a very really custom way. It's it's just a performance hog and so uh, I have to do something with Vex instead. But we're going to cover all that stuff so let's get started. All right, so let's get things started with our rope bridge by creating a uh, geometry container. I'm just going to make this a single geometry container. I'm not going to do a subnet. I don't really need multiple parts inside of Houdini Engine for this. Uh, you can if you want. Um, I'm going to call this IP Rope Bridge. I'm going to call this video because I have another one going. All right, I'm just going to right click on this, create digital asset. You're more than welcome to also use the version digital asset. I'm just more used to doing this. All right, so I'm going to put the namespace on it and then put a version number at the end here, like so. And uh, I usually go and capitalize these guys. All right, so then we want to go and save this. I'm just going to save it uh, next to my hip file, my HDA folder. Uh, you're more than welcome to save it wherever you like. Then hit accept. Destroy all spare parameters because we don't need them. And then let's go and hide all of our default parameters here because we do not want to see those guys. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a folder. I'm going to call this the um, handle, the point handles folder because uh, I want to set up some handles for this inside of the Houdini engine so we can drag around the two endpoints of the bridge. All right, and so I'm just going to call this uh, handle points for the actual label. And then we need two uh, float vector threes because we're controlling two points uh, in an add node. So I'm just going to call this PA for point A and give it a label of point A. And then we're going to do PB for point B, like so. And now I need to make sure that I initialize this. And it's, it's important to, to do this uh, because if, if you don't do this, then your points are just going to end up at the center of your HDA. And that's just a little jarring for uh, level designers when they first place the uh, HDA into a scene. So I'm going to initialize it to 5 and negative 5. Hit apply. 
And then let's go set up our handles now. So to do that, we go to the inter interactive tab into the handles tab here. And then we want to go and create a handle. And the one that we want to use for this HDA is the transformer. So the last one in the list there. And I'm going to give it a name of point A. And then we need another one. So let's create the handle for point B. So say point B. And then we need to connect them to our parameters, right? By themselves, these particular handles don't do anything. They actually need some sort of binding to some parameter on your HDA. All right, so that's why we created these float threes first. So select your point A X form there, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list here. All right, and we're looking for these TX, TY, and TZs, these uh, bindings. And so what we can do is click this little drop down over here and go find our point A X. All right, so we're going to control the X position with that and then we're going to control the y position and we're going to control the z position so all components of that vector cool make sure you hit apply and then let's set up the point b over here so again you want to go to your tx and bind it to the uh, p b x like so and ty goes to the p b y do that one more time there we go and just drag this guy all the way to the bottom and then finally, our TY, or TZ, sorry, goes to our PBZ. Hit apply and accept. Well, we don't really need to accept unless you want to get rid of the type properties window. You can always leave it up. Uh, I'm going to accept because I only have one screen for the video. All right, so let's um, drop down an add node after diving into our HDA here. And let's go ahead and create two points and then check them on so we actually have them. So that creates two points in our scene view here. Now what I want to do is I want to connect them to those two uh, float three or vectors that we created on our parameters. So quick way to do that is just right click right here on your HDA, go to parameters and channels and go to parameters. There we go. And then it makes it easy for us just to copy the parameter and go and paste it over here. There we go. So paste relative reference. Cool. So now you can see those points are uh, spaced out there. One last step for this particular process to go to the polygons by group tab on the add node here, and that will create a line for us. So now we have a, a primitive or a curve. Awesome. So with that all set up, you can see now if I hit enter, so if I just go up one level and then select my HDA, hit enter on the keyboard, you can see now our two handles are driving the positions of those two points. And that's exactly what we want to do. And these handles then uh, get displayed inside of the Houdini engine for Unity and for Unreal. So now we actually need to do something uh, with this. So I want, what I want to do is create the kind of hanging shape for the bridge here. And so to do that first, I'm going to create a resample node here, like so. Just wire it in. Uh, I'm going to set the length to uh, something like 0.5. You can set it to whatever you want. We're going to be adjusting this later on. And then for the attributes, I want to turn on the tangent attributes here. And rather than the tangent U, I want to send that into the normal. And you can see that that actually creates our flow normals for us as well. All right, so with that done, I'm going to create a subnet now. Drop this down. And this just helps me keep my systems um, contained. So it's easier to manage the HDA or your network. I'm going to call this the uh, bridge uh, shape, like so. Go. All right, I'm going to dive inside and let's go now and drop down a null node. And I really do this, this is actually that important. Um, I do this just to give myself some information about what's coming in. All right, so I'm going to select those guys, hit Shift L on the keyboard just to organize them. And really, that's just my OCD coming through. Um, you don't have to do any of those, those steps there. Uh, it's just what I do uh, whenever I start these things. Um, all right, so. Uh, let's create the kind of the droop shape. So I'm going to get our wrangle node here and uh, I'm going to call this the um, hang shape. Perfect. All right. So then let's go in here and start typing some vec. So this is really pretty easy. I'm going to say at p.y. So the y direction of this guy, we're going to droop all those points based off of some curve. So I'm going to say is minus equals to our course to a ch ramp. And we'll call this the hang shape like so. And we're going to use the um, F at curve U value. So that value that we created from the resample node. All right. So then to expose that ramp 
so we can control it, we just hit this little button over here. And that now allows me then to control my bridge. But I want this particular shape to be that droop shape. And I want it, the curve to look like this. So that means we need to do a one minus here, like so. Cool, so with that done, then I just need to go and select all the points holding down control on my keyboard and selecting all those little handles there and set their interpolation type to uh, B-spline. That'll give you a really nice curve. So it would also be nice to uh, have control over the intensity of this, this sag or this hang. So I'm gonna put some uh, brackets around these guys and we're gonna multiply it by a global value. So we'll call this intensity like so, and then expose that slider. So now we have control over that intensity. So I'm just going to droop it down just a little bit more. Cool. All right, so now we've got that all done. Uh, you'll notice that our flow normals aren't uh, set. And, you know, when you start doing this, uh, the lengths of these particular segments are different. So we should just drop down a resample node anyways and resample it again. And we'll do uh, 0.5. And <clears throat> we will just regenerate our normal and our curve U values. So now we have those flow normals there. All right, and then what I need is to create um, my other vectors for my curve direction. So I'm gonna call this DERS. And I am going to then use a uh, preset that I have. So this curve DER. So I'll let you guys take a minute and uh, just copy that code down. Basically what we're doing is we're taking the current normal, we're flattening it in Y right and then we're doing a cross product to find the right direction and then we're doing another cross pro product of the normal and the right direction to get the uh, the up vector and you can always view these um, if you select the node and uh, hit X on the keyboard to visualize your directions and then you can go to the visualizers tab here and um, we just want to pick the class so this is on the points and we want to get the right or we want to view the right we want to set the type uh, to marker and then the style to a vector that allows us to view that particular uh, direction. All right, so it's always good to give these guys a name. So I'm just gonna call this right and right. And then uh, we can just duplicate it. All right, so now we have two visualizers in here. So I'm gonna go to right two, and I'm gonna call this uh, up and up. And this will be up. And that should have shown us the up vector. One thing you need to make sure is turn on the active. Sorry about that. All right, so um, yeah, and then you can colorize these if you want. So we can go back to the right one and make it red. Those are the standard colors there. So yeah, now we have uh, all the uh, vectors we need to then pump into a sweep node. So let's drop down a sweep node now. And in this case, we'll just use the ribbon operation because that's really all we need. We will turn all these primitives into planks here pretty soon. So we don't need any columns here. And I'm just going to set the width to a value of one just to keep it normalized for now into a unit. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I don't need that visualizer anymore. You can always just keep it off to the side. It doesn't hurt anything. All right, and then let's just drop down our output node. So Houdini Engine knows exactly what to output. Beautiful. So let's uh, hop up and out there, select our HDA, and then just hit... Uh, enter on the keyboard to expose our handles. And now you can see now we are uh, controlling that. So the next thing I want to do now is take this HDA. Let's make sure we save it. And I'm going to hop into Unreal. All right, so here I have, you know, the quick example. I'm just going to delete this one out of there. Um, and so now I want to just point out that I'm actually using uh, Houdini Engine version 2 here. So you have this new uh, menu over here. So uh, make sure that you get the latest version. I'm also using Houdini 18.5.492, I believe it was. Yeah, 492. So it's the latest and greatest. Uh, it's from the daily builds as well, so this isn't the production build. All right, so let's go now and get our HDA that we've been creating. So I'm going to go to HDA, and I'm just going to drag and drop it into my HDA folder here inside of Unreal. Perfect. And then we can just drag and drop it into the scene and uh, bring that up there. And you can see our points actually did end up in the middle there, which is weird. Those defaults should have worked. 
Uh, again, this is uh, Houdini Engine version 2, so uh, some things are still a little buggy, though it, it's actually pretty functional. So yeah, there we go. So now we got two handles that allows us to uh, control the bridge and where we can uh, place it. Awesome. So with that done, let's now focus on actually building all the bridge parts. Let's now focus on uh, creating the wood planks. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the center of each one of these primitives and placing a wood plank onto those points. Because later on, we're also going to want to just instance some sort of parts onto it. So I'm going to go and create a new subnetwork here. And I'm going to call this uh, build planks, like so. And let's just take the uh, geometry that's coming out of this subnetwork and pump it into the first input there. All right, so let's uh, go and get this set up here. And this is just going to be geo in and uh, go and organize those guys. Otherwise it bothers me. All right. Then I hit uh, shift S on the keyboard just to get the wire design there. Okay. So uh, first thing we want to do is create the center point that we're going to copy onto. And so to do that, I'm going to use a uh, wrangle node here. And so I'm going to call this uh, create uh, center point like so. And to do this, it's quite simple. We just uh, want to run over our primitives, so each primitive here. And I just want to go and add a new point. So we say add point. We want to add it to the incoming geometry, or index 0, so the first input here. And use at p. So at p in the primitive context is the center of the uh, primitive. So if I hit w on the keyboard, you can see that we have a point now in the center of all those primitives. So let's just get rid of the uh, primitive here. And we're going to say 0. Um, at primnum, so the current primnum that we're working on, and then one to remove all the associated uh, points with that primitive. So we're left with just these points. So then we can use an add node uh, to turn that back into a curve so we can do stuff with it. So we just do the uh, by group, and there we go. So now we have all that back as a curve. Pretty cool. Really a quick way to you know get a center curve out of all your primitives. All right, so then with that, let's uh, create our flow normals again. So this time I'm going to use a polyframe node and uh, just for the tangent type in N. So now we have our flow normals. You can kind of see them there. Pretty small. You can always change the size of these if you just go to um, your guides and just set the scale number to one. There we go. Cool. And then uh, let's do our directions. So again, I'm just going to use my preset that I have. I'll call this node DERS just to give myself a little more information. And then we'll just drop this down and get the curved or code, like so. All right, so now we've got all that stuff set up. And uh, if we were to go and copy our Visualize node from our shape subnetwork there and uh, copy it, we can verify that we have all of our vectors that we need. Cool. So with that, um, let's go and create a box. We need to actually create the geometry for the plank. So let's take a look at this guy. Go back and do my shaded view hitting W on the keyboard. Now for the size in X, I'm going to keep this at 1. Because remember, um, our geometry coming in um, is a width of 1. So we'll control all this stuff here pretty soon with uh, uh, our uh, parameters. So I'm going to set this to a value of like 0.05 for Y. And then remember, our Z length is actually that resample length. right? So up here when we resample, um, our Z length is 0.5. Each one of these segments is roughly uh, a length of 0.5. So in our Z, we can just type in something like 0.4, just to make it a little bit smaller. Cool. So let's uh, turn that guy on there. And uh, let's give this a little bit of detail for now. We'll do something with it later on. So I'm going to do a poly bevel. And let's go and hook this guy up here. And let's just add a little bit of a bevel here. It won't need much because it's such a small object. And, you know, I want to randomize that bevel. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, convert the box over to polygon mesh. And then in our poly bevel node, you notice we're getting bevels for everything. So if we go to the exclusion, uh, drop down here, and set our ignore flat edges, you can see you can have control over when it does an actual bevel based off of that edge angle there. Cool. So then I can use a randomize attribute randomize node, and we can randomize this. So I'm just going to call this uh, bevel, and I'm going to set the dimensions to 
one, because we only need a single float value, and it's going to go between 0.5 and 1.5, or a random value between that. So you can see in your geometry spreadsheet here, now you have these bevel values. All right, so then in your polybevel node, you can actually go to this little drop down for the distance and say scale by attribute, and then type in that bevel attribute, and you can see that our bevels are all just a little bit different. And uh, then you can go and control, you know, that offset there, make it bigger. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so then we can go and uh, copy this to our points. So if we just drop down a copy to points node and just feed these two nodes in to that guy there, we get uh, our geometry copy to those points. Pretty cool. All right, so with that done, let's now go and uh, I'm going to drop down an assemble node because I want these guys to have a random color. And a quick way to do that is just to create this name attribute. So if you notice now in your primitives in your geometry spreadsheet, we have this piece attribute. So what I can do with that is I can drop down a color node here and randomize the color based off of the primitive name. So we just drop this or change this to random attribute, random from attribute. And uh, we want to do the name. You can see now we get a random color. All right, so now that we've got a random color, what I can do is actually change that into a grayscale value that we can use as a uh, blending value. So I'm going to do, I'm going to call this my value remap. And in this particular wrangle node, I'm going to roll over my points, which means I'm going to have to actually um, do a promote here. So let's do an attribute promote and promote that color value from primitives to points. So let's go from primitives to points, color value. So now you can see we don't have any color on our primitives, but we have it on our points over here, the point class. So let's do that. It'll just make it easier in this wrangle node to deal with. So we're going to say at CD is equal to, and I'm going to clamp it first, and then we're going to make it equal to a ramp value. And that name of the ramp is going to be called value uh, remap. All right, because I want to remap some value. And we're going to say RGB to HSV. This will allow us to get the value from one of the channels. So in this case, I'm going to do uh, dot B, the, the blue channel. We're going to remap that between uh, zero and one, like so. And then turn on our, or create our parameter here. So now we have the ability to, you know, remap our values. So you can do you know, different things with this. Just give it a little bit of variation there. Uh, and you can always go to the color node as well and just change your C value. So you can promote this to get different looks. Awesome. All right, so let's now go and create a color. And this is gonna be basically the base color of all those planks there. So I'm gonna put it on the point class, very important to take note of. And uh, you know, that default value is usually pretty good. So this little swatch right here is usually a pretty good wood color just for these debug type meshes at least. All right, so then I want to do a, a blend. All right, and I'm not going to use the labs nodes um, just because it's always good to learn how this stuff is actually done. So I'm going to call this uh, blend colors. As a technical artist, it's important to actually know how these things are done and not become super reliable or reliant on um, uh, the labs nodes. All right, so let's do other color. I'm going to go and extract or get the color from the second input here, index one, so our grayscale value. And that attribute name is CD, and we want to get it from the PTNUM. So PTNUM, because the, the point numbers are the same for both, both of these meshes. All right, so then let's create a, a white color. So we're gonna say vector uh, white is equal to just one, 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 like so. Then I'm gonna do an at CD, times equals, so the current color coming into this first input here, which is this color that you see on the in the scene view. And we're going to do a lerp, and I'm going to lerp from my white color to the other color. And we're going to create a blend float value. So I'm just going to call this blend, like so. And with that, let's make that spare parameter. And now we can blend in the, that grayscale value to get some variations there. Very cool. All right, so let's go now 
and just to organize this up. So I just select all these guys, hold A on the keyboard, and that uh, basically organizes them for you nicely. Again, you don't have to do that. I'm just nitpicky that way. Just like to keep these guys organized, makes it easier to read. All right, so now we've got our plank. So let's uh, just wire that into our output now. <clears throat> and let's uh, save our HDA and let's go back to Unreal. And you can just select your HDA that's in the content browser here, right click on it and say rebuild all instances. And there you go. So now we have our planks and uh, that's all working awesome so far. So let's uh, make sure that we save our U asset there and uh, let's focus on creating some uh, parameters now that we've got you know, quite a few things that we can control here. We're going to add a little bit more variation as well to uh, our plank. So let's go back to um, Houdini over here and uh, get that done. All right. So let's dive back in here and let's open up our type properties and start exposing some things. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to do is go and make this guy collapsible. So I'm going to hit apply. You'll notice uh, in Unreal here, um, it's a tab and I really don't want that. So I just want to make that collapsible, which is supported now in um, Unreal or uh, H Engine V2, which is great. Uh, so the next thing I want to do, let's make another collapsible folder over here. So I'm going to call this the uh, Planks uh, folder for now. Might change to Planks. Let's make sure we put the S on there. Again, I'm going to make it uh, collapsible. So apply. All right. So what I want to do is um, actually just promote this length value. So I just do an alt middle mouse click and that will expose it to your type properties window only if you have this open. And the default would be 0.5, which is working pretty well. And uh, I want to set a couple other things. So I'm going to call this um, planks width actually, or maybe it's not so much width. It's actually more of a depth. So we'll just call it uh, planks uh, depth. And zero to five might be a bit much. We can do, you don't, definitely don't want zero. So let's do 0 0.1 uh, to two. I think we'll be fine. I'll just lock those guys out. So let's hit apply. So now that we've done that, we need to make sure that we uh, copy this parameter and make sure we propagate that down to this other resample node here, right? Because I want those two to be the same values for this whole thing to work. So, uh, Again, let's test that out before we go too far. So we're going to go to parameters, go to our planks, and now we can control that plank value. One thing we do need to do is actually also, let me get rid of that guy there. We also need to then um, put that on the box as well for the Z value over here and then subtract 0.1 from it basically. So we could, we could always paste that relative reference or you could just reference this planks depth, right? So you could just do CH two quotation marks uh, go up a couple levels there and we want to get this uh, planks depth value. Then we're going to subtract 0 0.1 from it. All right, so let's test that out again. I'm going to go and select my parameters here. Yeah, so now the planks are accommodating that new size, which is good. And you know, even I think we could just keep this to like one, two, I think it's too much. Let's actually just put this on one there. Awesome. Apply and accept. Let's get rid of this. Uh, the other thing, actually, I do want to promote that width. So let's go to type properties here. Let's make a um, another folder here. We'll call this our uh, global folder. These are things that are global to the whole bridge. So in this case, the bridge width. All right, so let's go up one. And in my resample, that's where we have the uh, width value. We're actually not the resample, it's in the sweep node here. Let's go to the sweep node. This is where we are controlling the bridge width. So again, Alt, middle mouse click to send that value over here. And we can call this bridge uh, width. Now you don't have to go and rename these, but um, it's a good idea to give them custom names for sure. And so we definitely don't want 0.5 or we definitely don't want zero. We want something like 0 0.5 for the minimum and the max, maybe five. And this, that's all in meters. So just keep that in mind. So maybe six feet is enough. So two. All right. I'm just going to pull this off to the side there. Let's see here. Let's go and test that out now. Let's go to our parameters. 
Uh, and we also need to make it collapsible. So let's go to global, collapsible, apply. There we go. So now we have control over that width of the bridge. Uh, let's make sure we go and view the final here. So now we have the bridge width. Again, the planks aren't updating uh, because we are controlling it through this box here. And so we can now just get our bridge width here. Copy parameter. Paste that in for the X size. So now we have control over that and our depth of the blinks. Yeah, cool. All right, a couple more things I want to do for the planks here. Let's get rid of that guy there. I want to um, actually uh, make it so you can remove a certain amount of these guys. <clears throat> and so uh, before we go and uh, create the center point, let's remove, just do like some sort of weighted random selection and remove a couple of, of planks from there. And to do that, uh, I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle node, and we're going to do a um, rand selection here. And again, I, I want this to be a weighted selection, so we have control over how much is removed. So I'm going to create a new variable called weight, and this is going to be tied to a float parameter called weight as well. There we go. So let's actually promote that. And let's just uh, default that to 0.5. So basically half the prims will be removed. And so I'm going to do another float called rand val, and that is equal to rand at prim number. So we should actually be running over primitives in this case. And then we want to do a seed value as well. So we're going to do a seed value. There we go. And then finally, we're going to say if our uh, rand val is less than our weight in this case, I'm going to mark it for removal. You could also just remove it here. So we could just do a remove prim. We could say um, at prim num here and one to remove all the associated points. And let's go and um, do that there. And it looks like it is not wanting to do that for me. So let's try a different approach here. That should have actually worked, but I'm going to verify this by doing an at group and then giving it a name, we'll call this um, remove, and that is equal to one, like so. So now let's take a look at our primitive groups here. And, uh, yep, primitives. And it doesn't look like, yeah, we're getting any selection here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so now we are. Let's uh, test that again there. Comment that out. Oh, it was working. That is weird, it just wanted me to select it. I must had the display flag somewhere else. All right, so now we have, you know, a weighted approach to removing stuff instead of it being completely random. And we have a seed value, so it can change it. So really cool stuff. Yeah. So now our whole system still works because we're just removing primitives, right? So now we have our planks in, in that place. We should actually add a normal node here for this as well. I just put this all the way down. Yeah, much better. All right, so the next thing I want to do um, is go and promote some of those um, attributes now that we have. So let's go and into our type properties and let's go into our planks folder and let's um, promote these two guys. So let's just promote that. Alt middle mouse click to promote the seed value. I'm going to call this my uh, remove weight and removal weight like so. We'll call this the uh, remove seed value and our removal seed, something like that. And for the seed value, zero to one will be fine. It's pretty touchy. And then for our removal rate, zero to one is actually all we want for that. Set apply and uh, make sure everything's working. So let's go and let's display our parameters here. And yeah, there we go. Very nice. Cool, so the next thing I wanna do is um, focus on some random rotation. Currently, these guys um, are all super straight. And that is a dead giveaway that this is a procedural asset. And so I'm gonna go and use a regular mode for this. I do like to do the wrinkles. So we're going to do rotate for the name there. And I'm going to create a new uh, variable called max angle. So this will be the maximum rotation 
that the plane can actually achieve. So let's do max angle here. And then let's do float uh, rand val. And this is going to be equal to rand at pt num because we just need some random value to randomize the rotation. So that goes from zero to one. And then I need a float angle. And this is going to be equal to radians. And we're going to fit our rand val between our uh, maximum, a minimum, or so I should say the max angle, but negated to the max angle. So anyways, let's actually do it. And so you guys can see, so we'll say um, negative max angle to max angle like so. And it needs to be in radians uh, for the quaternion to work. So let's do a float four, or I'm sorry, <laughs> vector four. There we go. And we'll call this rot. And this is going to be equal to a quaternion. And we'll give it that angle and um, add up like so. And I forgot to type the whole thing. I was getting ahead of myself there. And I need an N. There we go. So finally, then we can just apply that rotation to our uh, normal. So I can say Q rotate and we'll do the rot and at and like so. So let's expose our max angle value. And so now uh, we should have control over the um, angle there. And it looks like, oh, there we go. I just need to do a little bit more there. So yeah, now we have a little bit more control there. It just makes it look a little bit more natural. I think I'm gonna put it on something like four as the default. Yeah, much better. Cool. So with that, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's um, expose that rotation value. So let's get this guy here. Just do a middle mouse click or alt middle mouse click. And we'll call this our max angle. Yeah, max rand angle, how about that? We'll do the same thing up here. We might want to put planks in front of that as well because we might have another random rotation. And this needs to go from yeah zero to maybe 10 as the max. Cool. Let's test it out. There we go. So now we have a little bit better control there. Very nice. All right, so let's jump all the way out. Let's just make sure we save. You can always, if you are in your network, you can always save from here as well, just by right clicking this guy. All right, so let's save it and we'll go back to Unreal here and let's do a rebuild all instances. And there we go. So now we're getting some cool randomized features, which is awesome. Yeah. So change the bridge width and we can change that depth there. <clears throat> as well. I actually kind of liked it a little bit skinnier. That's nice. And we can change our removal rate or weight. There we go. And our rotation. So we are on our way. All right. So now that we've got all that done, let's focus on getting some of the core like ropes and stuff like that in place. So now let's uh, focus on building the, the post at the end um, of the the uh, the bridge here and I want to have control over basically how far out you know how far they're leaning you know in the X direction and how far they're leaning in the Z direction all right so let's go take care of that I'm gonna double click this guy to dive inside I'm actually gonna move this guy off to the right here or off to the left there and um, I'm gonna call this out uh, planks and then I'm gonna create a new sub network here and I'm going to call this guy um, build bridge vectors. So in order to put these uh, posts on here, we actually need to build up some vectors, some very custom vectors. So we're going to be doing some quite a bit of X here uh, to get this going. And so, and this is again, just one way to do this uh, with, as with anything Houdini, there's tons and tons of ways you could accomplish the same thing. You could probably do it all with nodes. I'm just, you know, more comfortable with the, Back. So I'm going to call this null node geo in. All right. And um, first thing I need to do is turn this into two curves based on the, the 
the uh, borders here of this particular piece of geometry. So um, on that add node there, I'm just going to delete the geometry, but keep the points and uh, turn on the by group and then just set this to skip every nth point. And that basically gives us uh, the two side curves, which is perfect there. And then we need our flow normals back. And so we just use the poly frame. And in this case, um, what we can do with this guy here is, whoops, I went into the wrong one there. But basically what we can do is we can actually set up, you know, most of our directions just with the, um, the polyframe node. So let me uh, dive back into here for you guys. So all I need to do is just um, on this polyframe node, turn on all the options here and then we're gonna do a right and uh, we're gonna do in and then we're gonna do up for this. All right, so we should probably take a look at, see what the result of that is because it's not gonna be perfect right away. So if I just select my polyframe node and do a X or hit X on the keyboard, let's set up our right. Uh, you could always go and copy. Let me just do this one more time. Just so we beat it into your brains. So I'm gonna set right and we're gonna set that as a, a marker and we want that to be a vector. So you can see what we're going to need are the um, these vectors so they're facing away from each other. At least that's what I did. Um, I'm going to color this uh, red and then make a duplicate of it and uh, go to right to make sure it's on. Type in up for the name and label and then up for the attribute that we're using. And uh, yeah, there we go. So now we got it. So that one's pointing down. So we need to reverse that one. So um, there's a few things that we need to do in order to get uh, these guys all set up. So the first thing that we can do globally is drop down our angle node and just uh, reverse the up vector. So we're going to say reverse up. Now you could do it with a wrangle node. Um, I'll show you another way here in just a second. So I would just say v at up is equal to negative uh, v at up. And uh, let's wire that guy in there. So now those guys are pointing um, the opposite direction. And so you could also use a point expression node here as well if you don't want to type of course, I mean, this is just typing vex as well. Um, and so we would have to put in a custom and do up and then set it to negative at up like so. And you get the same result, right? So just a couple different ways to do that, right? I find that just to be faster using the angle node. Again, it all comes down to what you're comfortable with. Okay, um, and then uh, with that, let's uh, split these into two curves. So we can work on these guys uh, independently, the two halves independently. So I'm just going to split on zero. All right, so that's primitive zero. And uh, you know that by turning on this uh, primitive number display. So let me turn off my point numbers. All right, so there you go. All right, so now I've got primitive zero coming out this guy and primitive one coming out the second output there. So that way we can uh, start to uh, work on this, uh, work on each one individually. So let's uh, just drag the visualizers just so we can see what our current setup is. Now, uh, what we need to do is actually reverse the uh, the uh, right direction here. So let me type or drop down a wrangle note here. And I'm going to call this uh, set adders and, uh, and groups. There we go. So the first thing we know we need to do is uh, just reverse the, the right direction. So V at right is equal to negative v at right. There we go, and we'll just feed that guy into there. Cool, so now that's set up appropriately for us. And then let's do a couple things uh, for the endpoints here, right? So uh, let me turn off my print num numbers and turn on my point numbers. So we want to do something on the uh, first point and the last point here. So um, I can actually do that by just looking at the point number. So I can say if uh, P, a num is equal to zero, then you're the starting point. So I'm going to put you in the group and say I at group uh, start is equal to one and uh, else actually we could say if um, at PT num is equal to the number of points coming in to our first input there minus one, that means you're the end point. So I'm going to be, say I at group um, end is equal to one. All right, so now we've got two point groups set up, uh, start and end. All right, so there's our end, there's our start. You can see them highlighting here. All right, so now we've just uh, done that and did it all inside of a single wrangle node. 
R rather than using a group by range and trying to sift it all out or sort it all out. All right, so then on the first point, what I want to do is I want to um, set the up vector. Actually, I want to do this for both. So I'm going to say v at up is equal to um, 0, 1, 0. So just up in the world space there. There we go. Right, because we're going to be copying posts to these points. And the rest of the points are basically going to be used as like uh, as rope. All right, so these guys need special normals and vectors in order to be able to copy the post appropriately. Cool. So then I need to flatten out the normal. So I'm going to say at n um, dot y is equal to zero. And I also want to normalize it just to make sure it's a uh, unit length there. So I say normalize uh, at n. And we want to do the same thing down here. But we also want to reverse the normal here. So let's just paste in that code. And then before it, let's uh, actually reverse it. It needs to go the other way. There we go. Yeah. So now I've got the end here pointing the opposite direction as the uh, start point. Cool. So with that done, now we need to uh, basically set up the the vectors here so that we can control how far it's leaning in Z and how far it's leaning in X. So let's uh, drop down a wrangle node here and uh, we'll call this uh, post angles like so. And I'm going to make it so that this guy only runs over our uh, grouped points, right? So that way we're not running over every single point, which is great. So then let's set up two float parameters. So one for angle X that's going to be equal to radians because it has to be in radians to do the quaternion rotation. And so we convert the degrees. And I, the reason why I do that is because uh, when you go and put this into Houdini engine, uh, end users or level designers here are, are using your uh, tool, they're used to you know, thinking of rotations in degrees, right? So we want to convert it back to radians just so it's easier for the end users. So I'm going to call this post angle X. And uh, this one's going to be Z, like so, because we're going to control those particular rotations. So I'm going to say if uh, this particular point that we're working on is in point group uh, end, so we're going to say 0 for the incoming geometry, uh, end for the group name and the current point number, right? Because we want to treat both the end and start differently but we we want to work on all of those guys in the same wrangle node. So we both we have both the end and the start groups coming in. And so I need to write a little bit of code to basically decipher or to kind of partition up where the code goes. All right, so let's get the other one set up. So we just need one more if statement here set up. And this one's going to be working on the starts. Cool. There we go. So if to commit code, you might notice that I'm not really, you know, clicking out of it there very much while I'm writing code. I just do control enter when I'm done. And that basically commits the code and then let's, uh, Houdini cook the wrangle node without me leaving the, uh, the editor here. All right. So let's, uh, create a new quaternion. And so this is going to be rot X and this is going to be equal to uh, quaternion. And we want to use angle X. And we want to rotate on at n. So that's our main uh, pivot, basically. And so then we say v at up is equal to a q rotate. And we want to use that rot x quaternion in the v at up as the pivot as well. So now let's uh, expose that there. And let's actually visualize this as well as we're working on it so we can verify. So let's type in something for like. 10. Yeah. So there you go. So now we're rotating this guy. So this is basically controlling that X lean. Cool. Uh, and then we just need to do the same thing for the other side, sort of the start, but we just need to negate the uh, normal for this guy. Cool. So now we have control over the other, both sides. Of the same. You could always, you know, add a little bit of noise in there too if you want them to be a little bit different. I'm not going to do that um, in this video, at least. All right, let's do a vector four, and this one's going to be our rot z. There we go. 
and that's going to be equal to a quaternion as well. And this time we're going to use our angle Z. Like so. And we are going to do a V at right for the pivot. And then uh, our at N is going to be equal to a Q rotate. And that's going to be rot Z and at N. So you probably see a uh, pattern here when you're dealing with rotations. Uh, custom rotations here. You just build the quaternion and then use Q rotate to rotate the normal that you want. All right, so that looks like that needs to be negated. Yeah, because I want positive values. So I want the end user to always put in positive values and just take care of it in the VEX code, right? So uh, I'm going to do a negative angle Z for this guy. Yeah, so now it's always positive, and so that's controlling that Z lean. All right, so let's copy that code there, and let's uh, paste it in right here. And then let's uh, remove the negative. So now they should be, yeah. So if we did that, you can see we are leaning perfectly on the both sides. All right, so uh, with all that done, we just need to go and uh, copy this to the other side. That's why I'm splitting it up because each side needs a little bit different of a treatment. So for this particular side, uh, we don't need to invert the right. So let me actually visualize all this stuff so you guys can see. Uh, we don't need to convert the right or reverse the right on this side. Uh, it's already fine. So yeah, that's fine there. Cool. And you can see that our um, angles are uh, going in the uh, wrong direction here. So um, let's just do this. All we need to really do is go to this post angles or angle node, copy the uh, parameter for our angles. We just need to negate them. So let's just copy the post angle X and the post angle Z there and just paste them as a relative reference and then negate the, the value. So now we have a way. Let's actually merge those two guys together. So let's do a merge here. And visualize our vectors here. So now we have a way of just using these single values here to rotate perfectly on both sides. Yeah, uh, and we can always drop down a box here just to test this out. So let's do like 0.251 and 0.25 and uh, I'll use a match size node and we will do a min for this so it just sits right on the, the ground there and then we'll drop down a copy to points node like so and uh, the target points we want to set up as our end and our start there you go very cool let's turn off all of our component displays and test out our uh, values here so let's test out our lean to the z yep and our lean to the x Looks good. All right, so we are good to go. Let's actually, um, let's get rid of this test post because we need to set up something a little different for the final posts. But we had to do this part. We had to get all of our vectors uh, set up. So let's just get this uh, organized here so I can be happy. There we go. Cool. We are now set up to basically build uh, the rest of the bridge. So with that, uh, let's move on to the next uh, section. All right, so what we're gonna do now is focus on uh, just building out the official posts here. Now that we've got all these vectors built for us, so I'm just gonna move this over to the side here. And we're gonna drop down a submit, and I'm gonna call this uh, build post. We're also gonna do um, all the rope uh, curves in this node as well because I want to show you guys, you know, setting up the multiple outputs in, in these subnets as well. So it's always good. It's a good thing to know. So I'm just going to get this set up here. I'm going to call this uh, curves in and hit shift S on the keyboard to get my wire design. Cool. So with this done, um, what we can do right off the bat is start to build the post uh, itself. And to do that, I'm going to actually, this time, rather than using a box, I'm going to use a line. 
And I'm doing this because I want to uh, procedurally generate the UVs for this. So uh, we're going to approach this a little bit differently and I'll most likely update the uh, wood planks as well. So to do this, I need a line and a grid. So this grid is going to serve as the profile that we feed into a sweep node. Um, and so for this grid here, what I want to do is I'm going to set this up to, uh, I don't know, something like 0.15. And let's actually just copy this over here and paste it over there. So then we just have the one value uh, to adjust. Let's do a spacebar G on the keyboard. And we um, then want to get rid of all these extra subdivisions. So we'll just do two and two for the rows and columns in the grid there. And then uh, what I'm going to do is drop down a poly bevel node here because uh, I want a little bit of bevel uh, on the uh, actual profile there. So I'm actually going to switch this over to points and we're just going to bevel the edge there. Something like that. That was good for now. Um, and then let's drop down a polyframe node so we can do our uh, flow normals for our line, just so the sweep node works appropriately. All right, there we go. And then let's do a sweep node. And let's feed these guys into there like so. And it looks like we need to orient our grid. So let's do that and let's put it on the XY plane. Awesome. There we go. So I think I'm actually going to make this a little bit tinier because in the sweep node, we can go and apply scale along the curve. And I, I want to taper this a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a stylized look. So there we go. Actually, I felt pretty good there. All right, so we'll leave it there. We'll have to expose those guys to the HDA parameters here pretty soon. Uh, inside of the UVs and attributes tab, I want to go and compute my UVs. So I'm going to save my scene here and hit five on the keyboard to go to the UV view. And we're going to take a look at this and I don't want to normalize this. And then for the uh, seams, I don't want to snap to the nearest tile boundary. I actually want this to be you know, the same exact size as it is in 3D space. Okay, so there we go. Now we have UVs. Awesome. So we hit one to go back to perspective view. Let's now um, take care of the caps. All right, so we need the caps up here. And uh, the, that's another reason why I'm also you know, producing it this way, because then I can UV the caps uh, independently. All right, so let's do a polycap node. There we go. And we are going to need the uh, patch. One thing I should note, uh, you'll notice that this is just a polyfilled node. Even though it's a selection in the, the node library as polycap, it's really just a polyfill node um, that just has a preset on it, right? So you can actually set this up yourself. It's just a single polygon, basically. It's all, that's all it did. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, so we need to produce that patch group. And uh, what I'm going to do here is go and split off the patches or the caps. All right, so I'm going to select the patch group and invert that selection. So now we have the patches coming out of the uh, second output here. And uh, I'm going to go and blast away uh, primitive zero. So if I were to put a null node in here, just so you guys can visualize this and turn on your primnums, uh, you can see we don't need the bottom one. And it's always going to be on the bottom there. So let's remove primitive zero. So we're going to get rid of that guy. There we go. So I don't need this null node anymore. Excellent. Let's uh, drop down a poly extrude node. And let's give it a little bit of height and a little bit of inset as well. So just a little bit and then a little bit of inset. Yeah. Cool. All right. And then finally, we need to uh, generate some UVs. So let's drop down a UV project node. All right, and uh, with the UV project node selected, hit enter on the keyboard to see the projection plane. So all we need to do is just do a negative 90 here, and uh, we now have UVs, all right? Because we're working in the center of the world, this you know works completely fine. We're going to move it and copy it to points later. So let's merge together the post now and the caps. So now we have UVs for these guys, which is great. Awesome. So with that done, let's uh, now go and um, I'm actually going to put this into subnet. So I'm just going to do that and we'll call this a post just to keep things nice and organized in here. And uh, I want to then copy this to the point. So we're going to do a copy to points node and we're going to feed that guy into the first input, that guy into the second input. Now, right off the bat, you can see that we don't 
we only want to copy to our uh, start and end groups. So for our target points up here, let's just do end and start. Well, there we go. So now we've got uh, some posts. Beautiful. All right, so one thing that we're going to have to do, because now what I want to do is focus on the, uh, the ropes. So currently, uh, we have the bottom ropes already created, or at least the curve for the ropes. I need to create that top um, curve as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go back into the post uh, network here, the sub network. Let's not organize these guys by doing a shift L on the keyboard. Uh, what I need to do is actually include the line in here as well, right? So that initial line, because this represents the height. We may actually cur carve it a little bit so the, the top rope actually comes out a little bit lower than the top of the post itself. Um, so let's go and get an object merge node here. And I'm going to call this get line. And uh, let's go now and just drag and drop that into there. Set the transform to none because we don't need to import any transformation information. So now I've got the line over here. So let's carve it first. So we have control over the placement of that top rope. And you'll notice that it's actually carving on the bottom there. So let's do the second U. And we'll just yeah pull that down just a bit. Excellent. So I need two groups now. So the first one is going to be um, our um, post line. So I'm going to call it. And it's going to be primitives, so it's just going to select everything. This is the way we can separate it after we copy it to the points from the actual post geometry. And then the second group I'm going to create is a group to isolate out just the top point there. So I'm going to call this my top point and set the group type to points and put in base group of one. All right, because if you look, turn on your point numbers, you can see we have zero down here and one up here. I just want to isolate that out so I can also blast away uh, point zero. Excellent. Um, and with that, we pretty much have everything that we're going to um, need, I believe, for this. So let's merge these two guys together. So I'm going to put down another merge node. Just merge these guys together. And then we'll output that. So we have a line right in the middle there that's going to get copied onto those points. So I'm going to do an output node down here. There we go. Excellent. So now if we look at our copies, and go into wireframe mode by hitting uh, W on the keyboard. You can see there's a line in the middle of each one of those posts. And now what you can do is um, separate that stuff out. So I'm going to go now and do a split. So I can split away the post geometry from those lines. So I'm going to do a post uh, line. So that gets me the line. So I'm going to invert the selection. And if I put a null node down, you can see now I have the uh, post geometry on this side. And I have the uh, lines over here, which is perfect. So now all we need to do is just blast away that bottom point, like so. All right, so let's do um, top point and then just reverse it so we get just those top points there. And with that, we can then use an add node. So if we do an add node and we set this to uh, skip every nth point, I believe, let's do it, or groups of nth points. So it's we don't need to delete geometry. Let's just go into our polygon tab, go to by group. Yeah, there you go. Groups of endpoints. Perfect. And with that, we can now go and resample it. And on this resample node, let's include all the data so we need to build up our directions again uh, with all this stuff. And uh, I'm actually going to set this to that 0.5 value, which we could get from our type properties. So we're going to do CH and then two of those guys. And then we want to do the um, plank. I think it was the plank. Plank depth. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. All right. So with that done, let's go and create our tangent. Make this the normal. Those are our flow, no flow normals. And this is our curve U. Uh, value. Beautiful. And then we need to go and get the shape as well. So let's go up to the bridge shape and let's just copy this hang shape node. Then go back into our build post here and uh, just apply that there. There you go. So now we're going to basically connect this hang shape uh, to a single float ramp 
in our parameters, but we can control the top uh, value. So it looks a little bit different than the bottom sag. Awesome. So at this point, I also, I'm going to need to um, be able to determine um, left and right here. So let's do this. I'm going to make a little more space up here, create a group node. And in this group node, I'm going to group um, just the zero primitive. So if I turn on my primitive numbers, we're going to group this guy. I'm going to call that left like so and put in a zero here. This way we can split off and work on the individual sides when we do the side ropes. All right. And then uh, we're going to actually need to do that for this side as well. Oh, there we go. And then let's merge these two guys together. Now I have our ropes, uh, or at least our rope curves, which is looking good. Alrighty. And then let's now go and build our, um, the uh, side ropes here. Sorry, I was thinking about that for a second. All right, so um, let's do a resample. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for this one, say that we are going to resample um, actually based off of maximum segments. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to have the same amount of points so I can create these side ropes, right, rather than a, a length, because these two lines or uh, curves are uh, different lengths, right? So we'll get a different resample value if we use the maximum segment length. All right, so then let's uh, do a split here. And I'm going to split on left. So now we have the ability to uh, work on just the left or the right side. And for this, uh, we only really just need to do an add node here. I'm going to delete the geometry, but keep the points, and we'll do a by group. And inside of here, we need to... Um, do a skip every nth point. And if we move the slider here, at some point here, we'll get completely vertical lines. Now, if you look at the number that's choosing, it's going to be one plus this number. So we can just copy this particular parameter here and paste it in for this parameter and just do a plus one. So now your procedural full on. Yeah, perfect. And we've got all of our directions in place looking good. So let's just uh, do an alt left click drag to make a copy of that guy. So now we've got the uh, right side there and then let's just merge them back together. And there we go. So now we've got um, all of our direction vectors all set up. It's actually kind of funny that they are displaying there because I don't have a visualized node down here. So this must be a, a bug in Houdini 18.5. All right. So now we basically have all the curves. Uh, if we were to merge together uh, this node with uh, this node, yeah, let's, um, hold on one second, let's take care of this display issue here. Let's see if this fixes it. Nope. Uh, let's drop down another uh, visualized node. Yeah, where are those guys coming from? That is pretty funky. Let's put this into the output here. Go up a level. There we go. I just had clicked the, the visualization. So you can always click that on if you have visualizers on your geometry. All right. So with that done, I need, let's actually cut this output off here. Like so. And I'm going to take uh, the post geometry has output zero and then let's create another output node like so you can also alt click and drag this but it'll give you an error right off the bat and that's because we have output zero output one and this one's trying to be output zero as well so you'd have to put this to two um, in this case because we have three of them now right all right so now we've got all the uh the curves for the ropes and we have our posts Pretty cool. All right, so with that, you know what? I'm going to start assembling this stuff together. So let's set this up before we close out this uh, chapter or section here. So uh, I'm going to drop down an object merge node. And let's uh, drop down a null node. And for this first output here, we'll call this out posts. And I'm going to call this the assemble node. You guys probably see me do quite often. 
go. So I got that in there. Um, let's go and add another slot into our assemble object merge node and add our planks now. So we're starting to assemble the whole thing together into one piece of geometry. And let's send that out to the output. And uh, we can also just make sure we have normals down here. So for now, I'm just going to make them all just uh, completely hard angles. Cool. There we go. So now we've got that stuff. And we also have the the uh, ropes coming out of here, but we need to actually create the geometry for it. So uh, we'll do that here in the next uh, chapter. Uh, let's now uh, put the display flag on that output node and to save our uh, scene. And let's also save our um, HDA. All right. And let's go back to Unreal. And let's, uh, oh, let me get rid of my test one there. And let's go now and do a rebuild all instances to update it. And there we go. So now we've got uh, our post added on. How cool is that? There we go. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so I'm going to close it out there and move on to the next steps. All right, so let's do the ropes now. So I'm going to do a su another subnet. Uh, I do like to keep these guys pretty organized lately. So I'm going to call this uh, build ropes. And uh, let's just go ahead and get the output or the null node set up for this. So we'll say out ropes. And uh, this is a pretty cool little technique, super easy. Nothing crazy about it, but a uh, quick way to make ropes procedurally. So let's do a null node here. And I'm going to call this uh, curves in shift desk change my wire designs there. All right, so now we've got all these curves set up for us. Um, let's go now and turn all these into ropes. So the first thing I want to do is delete a bunch of attributes off here. It'll just mess with the uh, sweep node. So let's do an attribute uh, delete. And uh, let's go now and delete away our current uh, normal, our right, and our up. Those are the ones that will be the culprits. And also, we need to get rid of the text UVs because we're going to produce some UVs for the ropes using the sweep node. And um, I've found if you have UVs coming into a sweep node already on your points or your curve, uh, it overrides the sweep node. And um, so it's just one of those things that, you know, the more experience you have with the sweep node, you'll start realizing. So that's why I'm doing this um, up front. Cool. So let's do a new polyframe node uh, to regenerate those float normals for us. And then let's do a for each uh, connected, or actually we can just do primitive, right? Because um, these are all individual primitives. So let's just loop over each one of those individual curves using this for each primitive loop here. There we go. And uh, let's go and set this to single pass so we can just focus on the one. All right, so let's turn on our point display and then drop down another resample node here. I'm going to give this just a little bit more um, points to work with. It'll make the, the rope geometry a little more dense, but it'll look better. All right, so I'm going to do then a sweep node. And in the sweep node, we are going to go and select the round tube. So let's actually turn off uh, our primitive display there. In our point display, we can actually turn on our shaded on wire to see this a little better. Let's also reverse the cross section seams. It looks like it's going the wrong way. Awesome. So instead of actually outputting all the quadrilaterals here, uh, we just want to do the rows. That'll basically give us the cross sections here, right? And we also want to set the columns to three uh, because I'm going to twist these guys and then re or basically turn them back into curves using the points from these, these triangles. And so um, I'm going to apply some full twists here and that'll create a really cool looking pattern. And so let's just start with 10 there uh, for now. So at the end of this here, I'm going to go and create a new add node and we're going to do a delete geometry with key points. And I'm just going to leave it that way. So we get a spiral kind of like a DNA sequence type thing, right? Cool. So then at the end of that, all these guys should be set up. So let's turn off our single pass now. So now I've got, you know, all these guys with little spirals. Uh, let's do a sweep node now. And on the sweep node, let's just do, actually we need to do 
in the add node, we need to turn those back into curves. Hold on one second, I got ahead of myself there. Let's go to polygons by group, and then we want to do the three, or value of three for groups of endpoints and skipping every endpoint, and that'll create the spiral curves for us. So yeah, forgot a step there. All right, so then let's go back into the sweep node that we created, and we'll set this guy to the uh, round tube type. You can see we're already getting a really cool rope design that's really fat. Um, and you can play around with the resolution of this. I'd keep it kind of low, at least for now. And the res I mean, the uh, radius doesn't need to be so high, which also means we need to go back up to our previous sweep node here and just uh, drop down the radius there as well. That basically controls the uh, how tightly bound these guys are. And then we can go to our twists down here and just keep upping that. But you're going to notice that you're going to uh, run out of resolution, which means that you have to go and add more to your resample node. And that'll get you a little bit more um, resolution around your rope there. And some of these guys aren't cooperating quite nicely. I have to find a good value there for all these. Let's leave it at point 0.1 for now. And uh, Let's actually reduce the amount that we have there. So that's in our build post up here. I do need to start uh, exposing all those guys to the HDA. And for the twists, I think I found a value of 18 worked well. Let's do 18. Yeah, that seems like it's got everybody there perfectly. Some of these guys are a little bit rough there. So after playing around the settings a little bit, I finally got it into a pretty good spot here. Um, it's still a little rough for my taste. I would, you know, go and um, maybe resample the uh, the sides uh, a little bit differently. Um, maybe we take this resample node up here and uh, we do resample on the sides differently. Do I not have the sides anymore? get rid of that group let's take a look here so we have left patch are there any point groups I can use we can probably do something with those start and ends pretty soon uh, let's go and then create a group then for our sides we had it up there at one point our side curves where did they go yeah they're right here so let's just group these guys and uh, I'll call these sides. Yeah, and everything's hooked up just fine there now. So now with that group created, I can uh, resample differently on those ones. So let's try this. It's going to resample on the sides only. And oops, I had the group selection on there. It's on our point, point display. So now I should have control just over, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So I can do that one and then for this one, we can do an exclamation mark, which stands for not sides. So now I have control over the uh, resample for this one as well, individually. It looks like what, what's what we're going to need for these ropes here. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's see here. So those side ropes really need a lot more, don't they? There we go. Yeah. So you can see it's really starting to form a nice look. Uh, we could also twist them separately as well. So let's do that as well. So let's do a sweep node. And I'm going to set this one to not sides. Yep, there you go. And then let's uh, just move this off to the side, duplicate it with the alt left click, and then we'll just get rid of that exclamation mark there. There we go. And so I think it's just the amount of twisting that we need to reduce on these ones. So let's go to 10. And then let's merge them back together. Always lots of experimentation with this stuff. Uh, but you start getting used to the techniques uh, and then just customizing it for, you know, your needs. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Indi individual control. Let's actually go down here and just 
frame all. So yeah, now we have control over the side twist and the uh, top twists. We get really custom looks for both. Let's see if we reduce now the resample. So I don't need as much. Be a lot of geometry. Cool. So we fixed all that. There we go. So now we got something that looks like, you know, pretty cool ropes. Uh, we can also on the side ropes there now, since we have a separate one, just reduce the the radius of this here, make it a little thinner. Do the same. We could um, do the same thing down here. Here and do uh, sides. So this one's going to be not sides. Let's actually verify that here. See if the group got transferred. Nope. All right, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, you can go and uh, you know separate all that stuff out and create different groups uh, with that. So at least we have some ropes now. Um, let's color these guys a little bit. Just going to give them a little bit of like a brown color. Yeah. And let's add it to our assembly. There we go. Boom. This is really starting to come together. We're, we're going to have to go and, you know, scale out these uh, planks a little bit. It'd be cool to get a little bit more variation on that. They're sitting like right on top of the ropes, which isn't totally realistic. That does not look safe to me. It also looks like they're right in the center. Let's go fix that. Oh yeah, I didn't put a match size here, so let's do a match size. And set the justify Y to minimum, that way it's sitting on the rope. Yeah. Still, that does not look structurally sound. So, <laughs> we'll do something a little bit different here in a second. But anyways, you know, that's a quick way to make ropes really, really fast. Well, looks pretty cool. Let's actually now go and uh, save this. So we're going to do a save node type and go back to Unreal and always uh, test just to make sure everything's working. Yep, there we go. It's starting to look cool. It is taking a bit of time for it to actually generate the. So we're going to probably need a debug display. That is definitely a long cook time. So let's uh, do that really quickly before I close out this chapter. So I'm going to go back and do my video here, or my, sorry, my hip file here. And uh, let's do, we're going to have to just duplicate. Actually, let's do a switch here because if I just feed this in here like so, I should just get ropes and actually I need to move this guy over here just make a duplicate so that does all those guys and this one we just need to get rid of the grouping so we just get tubes which should be more performant for uh, Houdini engine and then we'll just add, what we'll do is we'll add a switch here so we can switch to the final resolution I right, you can always go and reduce the amount of geometry too it's just taking a while for it to cook yeah I think that'll work just fine for now. Let's uh, test that out. So I'm going to go and save my HDA, go back to Unreal, and rebuild all instances. Let's test out the speed now. Yeah, much better. So we'll just expose um, the toggle there. So when the artist or whoever's using this particular HDA is ready to bake it down to a final prop, um, they can just switch it to the final and then uh, cook it from there. So. There we go. Pretty cool. So now I got uh, some ropes. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, I think it's time now to go and start uh, promoting some parameters up here. We need to make a new folder for the ropes now as well. So let's do, let's call this uh, ropes uh, folder. I'll just give it a label of ropes like so. And let's now go and promote some of these parameters here. We might actually be able to speed some stuff up from a cooking standpoint. All right, so I'm going to call this the uh, debug switch and let's just go and promote this. So this will allow us to switch between our low res and high res. I'm going to call this the um, debug or ropes. Let's just do an R. We'll call this debug switch. 
And we'll say use high, like so, and we'll just keep it off by default. And this will be a toggle. Yeah, hit apply. Cool. All right, so a couple other things we want to do. I want to control the resample rates here. So let's see, this guy's 0.08 and this one's 0.03. All right, so we'll do this here. I'm gonna do a separator. So for the first one, let's do an alt middle mouse click. And the second one, same thing. And then let's just move those guys into there. And so for the first one, we're gonna call this the R underscore uh, length rope, or I should say length sampling, something like that. So we'll say length sampling. And then for this one, let's just actually copy this here. We'll call this the side sampling. There we go. And uh, yeah, I think these guys are a little bit too much. We'll put this up to like 0.5 for the max and 0.001 for the min. There we go, hit apply. Perfect. Now it'd be nice also to have control over the size of these things as well. Um, and so that's all controlled in here. So we'll call this the length size. Let's put in another separator. Let's make sure our ropes folder is also collapsible. And hit apply. There we go. All right. So these are the radius uh, or radii for the different uh, ropes here. So let's go and alt click that one. Alt middle mouse click that guy. And then alt middle mouse click this one. We'll call this the R length radius. So R length rad and then length radius. And this will be the R side rad side radius like so. And again, put in a, a nice minimum value so you can't get to zero and then 0.5 for the max. Let's do that. Because if it was zero, then you wouldn't see anything. And it just makes it feel like it's broken. There you go. Hit apply. Cool. Uh, you could also control the twisting and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to leave that stuff out for now. And then I think, finally, we just need the last radius here. Yeah, let's do this one. This will be our final radius. Lots of parameters here so far. So 0 0.01 and 0.5 for the max. Excellent. Uh, we can also uh, promote the color as well. Let's do that. Let's put in a separator here. Make it easier. All right, let's accept all that stuff there. Oh, uh, the one thing I know I, I definitely need to put up there is the, uh, the shape, the hanging shape. So let's uh, get that up there. So let's go to bridge shape and in here, let's promote, uh, this guy. So then we have, this is going to be our global. So we're just going to promote that by doing an alt minimus click. And then we have two intensities. So we're going to do one that is the, um, lower. So I'm going to call this the G for global. Uh, lower hang val. So we'll say lower hang value or intensity. There you go. And I'll put the max to something like five and we'll do 0.1 for minimum. It's got to be something. And then we also have the upper. So if we go into our build posts, this is where we built the, the other hang shape. And now what I want to do, let's actually do this. I'm going to right click here, go to parameters and I'm going to select my global. Oh, I need to apply it first. There you go. All right. So I'm just going to right click this, say copy parameter and we're going to connect it. I want the shapes to be the same. I just want the intensities to be different. So let's alt middle mouse click this uh, second intensity here and we'll call this the upper hang. So I'm just going to copy these parameter names here and just change out the uh, lower to upper. There we go. And let's get the uh, label as well. 
and call this upper. And let's do 0.1 for our minimum and five for the max. Not that you ever need it. You never know though. And apply and accept. So those were two very important ones I wanted to get out there. Excellent. All right, so I think we're good to go. Let's go and actually save this now and go back in Unreal. And I'm going to do a uh, rebuild all instances. There you go. Cool. So now we have uh, quite a few more controls um, at our disposal. If we go to the Houdini parameters, let's hide the uh, transform. So you see that we actually have this really nice curve now um, that allows us to control that kind of global shape. Uh, but then we have our intensities now where we can also increase the, the sag for the top and the bottom. So it really allows you to get some really cool shapes there. You know, all procedural. Everything's being UV mapped so far. Actually, the planks need to be set up for that. All right, so let's uh, check out our use high. That takes a bit for it to cook. It's just too much geometry. But it is working. It just takes a bit for it to actually cook it. That is looking pretty cool so far. Let's play around with some of these parameters. Might be able to get it to go a little bit faster. So let's just do 0 0.08 for our side guys there. Yeah, this, they all still look pretty good. Let's make the, the length radius a little bit bigger. Let's do like 0 0.025. Make it really stand out. And then looks like we need to do another radius in here. So we have a side radius of 0.00, I don't know, 1.5. Yeah, those, that just kind of straightens it out. So you're going to have to mess around with it. Yeah, I'll... I'll include all my updates and stuff like that uh, in the final HDA for you guys. So this one looks like it needs to be like half of the length sampling. Yeah. Our length radius would be 0.015. Yeah, it looks better. It'd be also nice to get the little knots, you know, for where these two different rope pieces attach, but I'm going to keep moving forward. So there's that. I'll start exposing more parameters. You know, the process is actually <laughs> quite boring. Um, and I, I just don't think that you guys want to watch me promote every single parameter uh, in here, unless I get to something that, you know, is really important for you guys to see. I'll put it on the video, but uh, for most of these guys, I'll include the final HDA. So you guys actually have access to it. And then uh, you guys can see all the pr parameters I promoted. For everything so yeah it's coming up pretty cool so far all right let's keep moving forward okay so next thing i want to do uh, here really quick is um, actually build a better plank that has uvs and also uh, take care of you know a random scaling uh, value um, i also want to make the uh, ropes there just a little bit bigger and actually i forgot um, let's go into the build ropes real really quick i didn't actually oh no i did so yeah, I actually just hooked this up to the length thread um, so I can control the, the debug version um, in the Unreal Engine. So if I go to my parameters here and I do the length, so let's go to ropes now. I do the uh, length radius that will fatten up those debug meshes. Yeah, cool. And it also allows you to see your resampling, which is nice as well. Do something like that. See what the high looks like. Yeah, that needs a little bit more work for sure. But the technique is the same. It all comes down to dialing and all those values. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're most likely going to be using this geometry for the final game uh, version. It's just the uh, high res needs to be uh, tweaked a little bit so you can transfer it. Or you could just take a tiling rope texture and just, you know, pipe it down these guys. Anyways, let's take care of the, the new plank now. So I'm actually going to just push all this stuff off to the side here and make a new sub network and we'll call this plank. 
So the reason why I'm doing this is because I want some EVs um, on it as well. So let's drop down our null node. We'll call this. Actually, we don't need a null node uh, for this one because we're going to be building geometry in here. So all these all these guys can just sit off to the side here. So I'm going to start this with a line actually. So let's do this. And this line is going to be set in the X direction, like so. And then I'm going to use a match size node to center it up in the world. There we go. <clears throat> Perfect. And I'm doing that because I'm going to, you know, um, I want it centered up in the world so I can copy it to the points. Cool. So then I need my grid. So let's make a grid here and let's set it to the XY plane and make the size. Oh, well, let's just do one on one for now and two and two for the rows and columns. So we have a nice clean grid. So let's take a look. Let's do a uh, poly bevel to give it some, a little bit of a bevel on those points. So let's just bevel the points, something like that. And then let's go and hook up the sweep node. And this will allow us to then sweep that shape. Yeah, so let's reverse it. Cool. So yeah, our, our sizes are definitely a little bit off. So what we're gonna need to do here is actually go to our original box here. And so the size in X is our bridge width. And that's actually going, I'm gonna randomize this here pretty soon. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, 0.05 is our Y size. So let's go back in here and change our Y size to that. Yeah, there you go. And then our depth that's hooked up to the parameter there. So then let's put that in for the, uh, the X and that was definitely a little bit too much. And that's because it needs one more of those guys. There you go. Cool. So let's make our bevel a lot smaller. Awesome. So with that all set up, we can go to our sweep node now and take care of our UVs. So let's do that. We'll do a compute UVs. I don't want to normalize them. So let me save my scene here and um, show you what's happening here. So um, I don't want it all snapped like this to the zero to one ratio or zero to one space. I want it the actual size in 3D. So we get a nice clean UV mapping. Beautiful. So now let's take care of the caps doing that same technique that we did for the post. So I'm going to use a polycap node. There we go. And we are going to then output the patch group so we can split on that. And UV just the patch sides there. And also, let's actually invert that. Uh, but we can also use a poly extrude node to you know, bump it out a little bit, give it a little bit of an inset, which will look nice. So let's just go out a little bit and then just a little bit for that inset. Something like that. And then let's uh, do a UV project. There we go. Now let's uh, select the UV project node, hit enter in the scene view there, and let's rotate the uh, projection plane in Y so we get our UVs projected perfectly. Cool. So let's merge those two guys together. Put merge node and pipe that guy in. There we go. Set that guy up. And now we have all of our UVs and we'll lay these out here in just a little bit, but at least they're there and I don't want to have a bunch of UV layout uh, nodes. I just want to do it at the end because it's a, a performance um, hog I've noticed. So let's uh, do that. So now I have a new plank geometry, which is perfect. And I'm going to actually, yeah, let's just cut this off. Hold Y on the keyboard and left click drag. Let's pipe it into our match size node. So it's sitting you know, right on the grid there, not in the center. That way when it copies the points, it's sitting on top of the ropes. All right, there we go. We are all set up there. And we don't really need this anymore. Nah, I'll leave it there just for now, just in case. I don't wanna delete all my work. All right, so um, the next thing I wanna do is, you know, on a per point basis, I want a different size in the the width there. And so to do that, I need to do a for each point node or loop here and loop over each one of these points because each one of the points is going to have a specific random scale value that we're going to assign here right now. So to do that, we're going to do an attribute randomized node. And this is going to be rand uh, width scale like so. I'm going to call this W scale. All right, and I'm going to set this to that 
uh, main width. So the minimum size has to be the bridge width that we set. So we're going to say that's our minimum size plus a little bit extra. So it's sitting just a bit over the, the uh, width of the rope. So I'm going to say plus 0 0.1. And then let's do, let's actually, yeah, let's do this. Let's copy this here. And we'll make two float uh, sliders here to control. We'll say plus one just to get that randomized. But we'll create two float sliders for this so you can control this addition. All right, so now if you actually were to go to your uh, geometry spreadsheet here, you'll notice that we have a width scale and it's random, right? So on a per point basis, right? Because in this loop here, we're looping through each point. We can actually extract the data that's sitting on the point there uh, using a point expression. And so to make this easier on myself, I'm going to drop down a null node. And this null node will just be an easy way for me to find the point that I want to extract data from. All right, so with that all set up, let's dive back into our plank here. And the thing or the node that's controlling the width of our plank here is this line node, right? And this is cool because um, as I change this, let me actually zoom out here, you know, the, the UVs are updating constantly for us, right? So we're constantly getting our UVs generated for us, which is great. So I can use this value then um, to extract that point data. And to do that, we use a point expression. So we say point and the um, node we want to get the data from is that uh, loop point node. So we say dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash to jump up and out, right? To get up and out to here so we can get access to this node. And then uh, we need to say uh, which point, right? And then we need to say the um, name of the attribute, so W scale. And then we want to say zero for the index. And since it's a float value, it's just a zero. All right, cool. So now if I were to look at all my planks, we have a different scale form. All right, so let's set up our type properties for this. So in our paint planks, not our planks, our planks here, um, let's go and add uh, two float sliders and a separator just to make this easier for us to see. And I'm going to call this my, um, what was I call this? Planks. I didn't actually do a good job naming those guys. So we'll say planks and we'll call this min scale. So min scale for the label. And then we'll do planks, max scale, and max scale for the label. And we should go and set up some default values. So the min scale I'm going to say is 0.1. And our max scale, let's say, is like 0.5. And then for both of these guys, let's set this up so it's like 0.01 to 1. Again, you can always change this stuff later on. So yeah, let's hit that. I'm going to save my scene. Accept. Looks good. So now, um, in our width scale here, let's replace these hard-coded values with our parameters. Right. So we say ch uh, dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash I believe to get up and out and then we want to do planks um, min scale yeah there we go and then let's just copy this just to make it easier on ourselves and we'll do max scale there we go cool so let's save our scene and let's open up our parameters and mess around with that so yeah in our global now let's hide everything else there now we have control over that min scale and our max scale there. Uh, we probably we can also do like a seed value as well. That's probably a good idea to set up so, so you can kind of randomize it. Yeah, it's already pretty wide, but you can see now we can't actually go past our max our bridge width, right? So if we go to our uh, global here, that goes, and then we have our min max scale, and that basically allows us to kind of pop it out a little bit more. So let's add that seed value in there. Let's go back in here. Actually, first foremost, let's go and uh, back in our type properties and let's just create a seed value. So that's in our planks. So let's do uh, planks scale seed. And we'll call this scale seed. And your range can just be zero to one. It has quite a bit of an effect. So we'll say 0.5, hit apply accept 
And now in our attribute randomized node, you can go to the options here. And this is your global seed, so this allows you to pick a different, you know, seed value. So let's we'll hook it up to our properties. So we'll do dot, dot forward slash, dot dot forward slash, and we want planks, um, scale seed. Yeah. There we go. So now we can save our scene, save our HDA, take a look at our parameters here. Well, actually, we don't need to do it there. So yeah, now we can go and pick different ones from here. I like that much better. So let's uh, save this and test it out inside of Unreal. So just select our HDA, do uh, rebuild all instances, it re-imports it, then re-clicks it. I do have the uh, high res. I've been messing around with it a little bit more. Let's go and select this guy here. I'm going to switch it back to the debugs. And let's just make those guys a little bit fatter. Too much. Yeah, there you go. Cool. So let's play around with our uh, scale stuff here. So if I pick a different seed value, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Kind of like it a little bit more. It's a little more cartoony that way, you know. Let's remove a few more. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. It's starting to get quite full featured, though we still have more to do. Um, the next thing I want to work on now is I want to add the little support ropes, right? So we have, I mean, obviously structurally, you know, this bridge wouldn't hold itself up unless these posts are really deep into the ground. Um, you know, usually they have like some sort of rope, you know, that's pegged into the ground coming off here. That's helping to keep it going. So uh, I want to get that in there as well. So let's do that. So yeah, let's go and now take care of these, at least the, the curve for it. And uh, we'll um, get some rope on there as well, since we've already got those networks set up. So really all we need to do is, uh, the basic idea is to get the two endpoints, you know, at the ends of these uh, curves here. Make sure the normals are facing away from each other. And then figure out... Um, where what the distance is from here so we could probably use a couple of the pieces of geometry we've already created so like the post line we'll get that top point and make sure that it has you know the proper normal so we can project a line outwards from it so that is what i'm going to attempt to do here in this particular section so let's uh, dive inside and uh so here we have the uh the rope curve so i'm going to need Basically, I'm going to need these top points here. So that is coming from there. Yep. And so let's make sure. Let's see what kind of grouping we have on here. So all I want to do is find my point groups. So I have, so those guys are hosed, but we have top points. And it's just, it got all hosed because of the um, resampling, right? So you can see how we have the uh, the groups are about halfway. So that's all coming from that resampling there. So one thing we can do for this, this is basically all the information I need right here. Uh, we have normals, but we can actually redo the normals. So let's do this. I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick here to find the endpoints without doing a group by range. So Let's do a wrangle node and let's feed that in here. We're going to call this find nays or find ends. I'm going to use the neighbors uh, functions in this, right? Now, the whole idea behind this is if you look at, you know, the points, each point here on the curve. So if I look at this point right here, how many neighboring points does it have that are connected? Well, it has two, right? And all the other points basically have two that are in the middle, except for the endpoints. The endpoints only have one. So that's an easy way for us to identify um, the ends on this guy here. And so all I need to do <clears throat> is um, do an int and we'll call this nays and we can get the neighbor count. So we say neighbor count and we want to do zero and at PT num. So the current number, point number that we're running over, right? And so then I'm just going to say if um, nays is equal to one, that means you're an endpoint. So I'm going to say i at group is equal to end or ends. That's equal to one. There you go. So now if I look at my point groups here, we have ends. That's kind of hard to see. So let's actually do a group delete. After a while, you get a lot of these groups in there. So I'm just going to put in a wildcard 
right? So it deletes everything out. So you can see now we have our ends group. So a really quick way to find the ends when you have lots of geometry. The group by range wouldn't work in this case without us having to lay down a few more nodes and split, you know, the two pieces apart. So we could find just the ends. This is uh, just a better way to go about it there. Cool. So with that, um, let's do this. I'm going to actually do a blast. And we're going to blast away anything that's not the ends there. So I'm going to say ends, and that leaves us with these two points like so, which allows us then to do a polyframe. Yeah. And we can do our flow normals. There we go. So now we have perfect normals to begin with here. All right. And all I need to do now is flip one of these guys. So if we take a look at our point numbers, like so, what we want to do, actually, we, we can do a trick here where um, we can loop through on a per primitive basis and just point the uh, normals away from each other. Yeah, so let's do that. Um, so I'm going to do attribute wrangle. Try to do this all with a wrangle node instead of looping. So call these away facing normals. Yep. All right. So we're going to loop through per primitive. Uh, what I need to do now is I need to say in points. So I need to get all the points from the current primitive. And to do that, we do a prim points. So we say prim points. And you can leave one parenthesis open there to find out the arguments that this particular function takes. So we need the geometry and the prim number, which is just the current prim number that we're looping over. All right, so that's going to be equal to two, right? So we only have two points here, which basically means that um, all I need to do is just get uh, the first point and the second point in their positions and then do a little bit of uh, vector subtraction to find the, uh, the away facing normals. Right, and so um, I'm going to do vector norm a is equal to points uh, zero. And actually, what we need to do, let's do this first. I'm going to do uh, vector pause a is equal to uh, point, and we want to get it from the incoming geometry. We want to get the position attribute, and that's going to be points uh, zero. So that's pause a. And then I want to do uh, pause B. So let's just copy that line and this will be one. And this works because we only have two points, right? So let's just make sure that that doesn't throw any errors. Yeah, we're good. So then uh, normal A, I believe is pause A minus pause B. And vector norm B is equal to pause B minus pause A. There we go. Let's put a little space in here just for being neat. And then we could just uh, set, so basically we need to set the normals now, right? So uh, we do this by doing set point attribute. Because remember, we're running over primitives, so we don't have access to the points. Uh, this is how we set attributes on points in the primitive context. So I'm going to set a point, um, actually, <laughs> I'll pick the wrong one. So set point attribute. Set point attribute. There you go. So zero. I want to set the n or normal. Uh, we're going to set it on point zero and we're going to do norm a and set to make sure that it sets. And I didn't like that for the point number. Oh, it's because it's the wrong name. Yep, that's working. We also need to normalize it. But let's finish our code here really quick. And I'm going to go and say norm B and point one. All right, there you go. So now we're facing away from each other. Uh, let's just normalize this right here. So we have unit vectors. There we go. Sweet. All right, so now we have our away facing um, normals, which is perfect. So let's. Let's do this. I'm going to build a different subnet for this. So I'm going to do another output. And we could probably put it over. No, this will be fine right here. There we go. Yep, output two is fine. So with that, we'll just move this over here. Let's do another subnet. And we'll feed that in. And I'm going to do, what should we call these? Uh, build. Um, 
tie downs, I don't know, support ropes, something like that. So anyways, I'll let you guys pick a cool name. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to call them tie downs. Awesome. So let's go and make sure, let's just template all this so we can uh, get an idea of what else I need to do. So I'll, the other piece of information that I need here is the height of, just the total Y size of our, um, our post curves, our post lengths. And to do that, we can actually build up a, a detail attribute that just goes along with uh, the geometry here. So let's do that really quickly. Where did I split the guys here? So post lines right here. So yeah, what we can do right here, let's drop down another attribute wrangle node. And I'm going to call this the post line height. Let's run over detail because we're going to add a new detail attribute. This is going to be a float value. And we're going to say F at post height. Let's do underscore post height. And we're going to do the, um, we're going to get BB box size of the incoming geometry and the Y size. There you go. So now if we were to look at our detail attributes here, you can see that we have a value of uh, 0 0.8. All right. And you, you'll notice that if we come all the way down here, the detail attribute is still moving along with the geometry, right? It's still being pushed down this whole stream here. And you can see that it's still available. And now, that particular detail attribute is on the, the curve. Yep. So we can use that information to um, create a, a line that uh, looks like it's being tied into the ground. So let's do that. So let's uh, drop down a null node here. Now I'm going to call this uh, geo in. And um, we don't really need the geometry anymore. We just really need those points there. So I'm just going to delete the geometry, but keep the points. And I'm going to create a line now. And this line's got to point in the Z direction for this to work. Right? Uh, it's because the direction that the normal is pointing is going to be is the Z direction. So when I copy this, so I do a copy to points now. Select these two guys and feed it in there like so. You can see how now they're being copied in their normal directions, which is great. So now we have control over that length for the line. So now what we need to do is we need to move the endpoints down that detail attribute amount, right? So this amount right here that's going along with the geometry. So let's create a group. And this group's going to be the um, endpoint. So we'll call it endpoint. And we need to set our group type to points. And it's just it's going to be one because the line just has zero and one, and that endpoint is one. So we group just that guy. So now for each one of these guys, if I go to my group and attribute list here, you can see, let's actually do another group delete to clean things up. So it's easier to see. Let's put in the wild card. There you go. So now you can see we have the endpoints. Awesome. So now all we need to do really is uh, drop down another attribute wrangle node. This time we're going to run over points. We're only going to run over that endpoint group. And let's get the data. We can actually get it from this guy because it's still on this. Yeah, so let's just put the data in there. One thing I do like to do in this uh, scenario is to use a little knot. So if you hold down Alt and then click, you create a little knot there. So then we'll uh, pass um, height, pass post height. And we'll just negate it. So because we're already at the, the highest point, right? That's where we copied to. So all I need to do is say at p.y. Um, uh, minus equals uh, detail, so the incoming geometry from in input one there, right? So this is zero one, and we want that uh, post height. Yeah, post height. So the name of the attribute is post height, and just zero for the first index. There you go. So now we've got the curves for it. Now we might want to make that a little more intense, so we're gonna you know do some addition. So we'll say plus some sort of intensity value. I might want to sink it into the ground a little bit more just to be, you know, kind of gamey about it. Yeah. So now we have a little bit more beautiful and we also have control over how far out that goes, right? Yeah. 
So let's just do a quick sweep on this and test this out. And uh, I'm going to also create some UVs for it. So I don't want to normalize and I don't want to snap. Let's save our scene now. Let's change the uh, surface shape to our round tube. And then let's hook up. So we don't need all those columns there. Leave it at six and then we're, we're going to do ch dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash and I want the um, rope length rad. Yeah, there you go. So it's the same length or same width as the, the ropes um, in the lengthwise, not the side ropes. Cool. Yeah, I think that's going to work. And we have UVs too. Yep. Beautiful. Well, let's uh, just output that and add it on and test it out in Unreal. Yeah, look at that. That's a nice extra little touch there. Beautiful. So yeah, we got a template mode here. And let's just make sure that we actually put that into the assemble node. Sorry, I was just getting lost in looking at it. <laughs> Uh, we also need the color too. You know, one thing we could do, let's just merge these two together since I want the rope colors to be the same. So let's just do this. I don't need the tie downs. Let's uh, then go grab the color node out of here. And uh, so I'm using the U and I key to quickly fly in and out of the nodes there. Uh, much, much more handy. And that looks like it set it all to blow. Oh, it's because these guys are all off now. They just need one those dot dot forward slash is removed because we moved it up a level. Yeah, there you go. Excellent. And I do like to even these guys out. Let's make it feel organized. Anyways, yeah, so there we go. That's how we build those kind of tie downs. I wish I actually knew the official name from they might not even have an official name you never know so let's go and uh, rebuild our our instance there we go look at that let's uh test this out here so let's actually select it and let's uh move this around in the scene yeah looks like it's working pretty nice let's one thing i always test with these kind of setups is to kind of you know really flip it and make sure everything's rotating appropriately so I just flipped the two handles. Yeah, everything was looking good. So let's move this guy over here. Excellent. Yeah, this is actually kind of turned out cool. Not that I ever had any doubt. <laughs> All right. Cool. So I'm going to end this section there. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do next. I'm going to think about it here for a second. I think I want to add a couple more things on here. It'd be nice to texture this up too. But uh, so far, that's actually looking pretty cool. Let's uh, turn on the high res. I do need to work on that a little bit more. But still, that's looking pretty sweet. We do need to make a rope, a high res rope for that for our tie downs. Well, that was working out. It'd be nice to do little knots too, you know, for these guys. Maybe that's what we'll do next. All right, let's move on. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things in this section. I want to give some color to the posts over here. They're looking a little bland right now. And also we want to do the knots. So let's do the knots first here. So I'm going to jump into the build ropes node here. And I'm going to drop down a blast node because what I want to do is just get those side curves that we have. So I'm going to go and get the sides. In this case, uh, you can do the not sides, or you can just use the delete non-selected. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So uh, let's do some flow normals for these guys. Actually, do they already have them? No. Yeah. So let's do the flow normals for these guys now. Beautiful, because I want the you know the knots to be in line with the actual rope for the sides there. So that'll work. Next thing I need is a circle. This will form as the base kind of path for the circle and the base radius also. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, copy this to the points, each one of those points there. 
All right, and we also need to make this on the ZX plane, so it's following those guys there. And it looks like, actually, we are getting a little bit of oddness, and that's most likely because we have um, some extra attributes. So let's take it from here. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm looking for. So I just want to get rid of those old uh, right values and stuff like that. They look a little off. Let's just keep moving forward and see how it looks in the end there. Uh, we're going to make this pretty tiny, you know, because these are just kind of knots that loop around the rope. Make it look like it's holding on a little bit better. All right, so with that, let's make sure we turn on polygons for those guys. That's looking good so far. And then um, let's do a loop. So let's do it for each primitive here. So we can loop through each one of those guys and perform the knot, the torus knot. Now, I'm not going to do any VEX for this. You can actually do it quite quickly with um, a sweep node and an add node or resample node. So uh, I'm going to do the sweep node and we're going to do our round tube with the three sections, cross sections. So round tube, three cross sections. Let's make it a little bit smaller here. And let's just output the... Um, the rows, right? And then let's do some twists. Let's do this. We'll do some full twists here. Just like three. We don't need a ton there. All right. And then we're going to do the add node. So we turn them back into curves and delete the geometry, keep the points and we'll do skip every end point and put it to three. That way we get um, the beginnings of our torus knot at least. I'm also going to make this closed. That way we get these curves that are basically, you know, Inter interweaving with each other like so uh, we can also add a couple more um, actually we need them down here oh I need to actually put this down there you go now we'll get better resolution so I had to turn this on because if you have it um, plug or if you have the display flag on this guy the cache isn't updating so you need to put the display flag so this guy cooks cool so now you can see that we have kind of this torus nut thing going on. And then I'm going to resample this. So let's resample. And let's do maximum segments. That way I have control over the resolution of these guys. And I'm going to output the normal, so the flow normal, using the resample this time. So there you go. Cool. So yeah, now we have a pretty cool torus nut. Let's do a subdivision curve as well. Just make it a little smoother. Uh, and then we'll just do a sweep. And we will do round tube. Let's go back to our shaded view and drop down this resolution or the radius there. Probably don't need as many loops there. There we go. So now we got a torus knot. We can control a bunch of things. Let's actually just get it merged in. I'm actually going to merge it in so we always have these guys. I think they'll look pretty cool. Yeah, and then let's uh, hook it up so that we have the same. Well, let's also turn off the uh, single pass. There we go. So now we're getting there, getting closer. Um, let's go get the length rad channel and put that into, I believe, this guy. So let's do that. And uh, we'll do a uh, times something like 1.5. Yeah, there you go. So it's just a little bit bigger. And so that controls that. This controls the radius of each individual strand. And then we have our twists. I don't think I need as many twists. Let's just do two. That looks better. And then maybe make it a little bit fatter here. Yeah, that's all you really need. Let's take a look down here. Yeah, that looks fine. Very cool. All right, so I'm actually going to call that good. I think that is going to work out just fine. Uh, I'll probably let's let's mix up the normals as well. Uh, down here, I'm doing it kind of globally. So you know, for the planks and posts, that's fine. Having the hard edges. I think for the ropes, I'm going to make it soft. So we'll just do this. Just 180. There we go. Those look better. In Unreal. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. 
I know it's not like super realistic or anything, but it does the job. You know, honestly, if you're running through a game and you're, the player's just running through this, they're not going to sit there and be like, oh my god. You know, it's not totally connected properly. <laughs> Some people might, I don't know. Anyways. Um, all right. So let's take care of the colors on the post then. So I'm going to go to my build posts here. And we have plenty of room here to take care of this. Of course, you know, a better thing to do is just to do it on the post itself. Uh, and the reason why is because, you know, it's all centered up in the world and we can build a gradient pretty easily. And again, I'm not going to use the labs nodes because I don't like to you know, include them in my HDAs when I'm using Houdini Engine. It's just a little risky to do that um, in terms of versions and um, you have to leave them unlocked, all that stuff. So uh, let's let's go and drag or create a wrangle node. And uh, this is going to be my, my ramp value. So I'm going to do ramp here. And we can actually do a color ramp inside of these guys. So let's put it on the points. And what we need to do is build a ramp that basically goes uh, from 0 to 1 uh, based off the height of the, the post here. So to do that, we need to first get the size. So I'm going to call this the um, size. This is going to be a get uh, size. Like so. And we want to feed in the first input there. All right, so now we have the Y size. And uh, basically, we need to just fit. We also are going to need our box min and box max for this. So let's do a vector uh, box min and box max. We'll do get uh, BB box. Uh, just get BB box, really. So it gets all of them all at once. And then you feed in box min and box max like so. I'm sorry, I'm doing this on the wrong line here. I got ahead of myself. There we go. Cool. There you go. So but basically what happens, if you actually look at the documentation here for this, uh, it, it basically is like a ref if in um, C sharp. It outputs. Um, the value into the variable that you're feeding in. And that's what the little AND symbol means for that stuff. All right. <clears throat> cool. So now we have the, the minimum and the maximum. And uh, all we need to really do now is say at CD is equal to fit um, at P dot Y. There you go. Dot Y. And we want to fit it between box min dot Y and box box max dot y and then fit it to zero to one like so and there you go so now we have a gradient <clears throat> and let's actually excuse me there um let's actually put that into a um variable called ramp so we can actually create um uh, a fitting uh ramp here so basically i'm going to then say at cd is equal to ch ramp we'll call this um, gradient and we'll feed it in the ramp uh, value there. And then let's create the float parameter. And now this allows us to kind of uh, basically remap uh, the ramp there. Of course, we don't have a lot of polygons on this, right? Uh, if I were to go to wireframe view, we don't have any polygons. And since we're working with vertex colors, we need to add some more points here. So yeah, that'll be, that's fine. So I just did five points there. So now we can, you know, really adjust where that ramp starts. Cool. So then, um, yeah, we can uh, we can use that value in a color node. So you could always just put this into something like uh, f at uh, ramp, or actually that's called gradient, like so. And then we pump that into a color node. And then we can uh, affect the colors. So we say point, and we want to do ramp from attribute, and we do gradient. So now we get the same thing, right? Um, and actually. That means, you know, honestly, we don't really, we could always, we don't really need to create a ramp here. So let's actually, I'm going to show you how to get rid of your uh, spare parameters. Let's do this. Let's get rid of that guy. And, uh, but now you notice that we have this spare parameter that we created. So all you need to do is just come up here and say, uh, delete all spare parameters. And that clears it out. All right. So now we have, you know, this ramp down here, but we can actually colorize it. So I'm going to make this a little bit like green. I think, and this one's going to be the wood color. 
So do something like that. And uh, maybe the green is a, a little too much there. Get it more in like a, a wood color. Maybe a little darker too. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's make this a little bit lighter so it really pops. Awesome. Now we got some color there. And let's actually move our output down. There we go. And let's move the display flag down there. Yeah, very cool. And it looks like I hose something because the ropes are really, really low now. It's funny. Uh, let's see what I did. Huh, that was weird. Let's go and take a look on a copy of points to see where that um, error actually starts to happen. Oh. So there's our points. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's what it was, because I added more points to the line, right? So, quick way to actually fix that. It's good that that happened. It happens to me all the time. I forget about stuff. So a quick way to get rid of all this here, even before the carve here, um, let's just do a facet node. This allows you then to uh, remove inline points. And uh, yeah, so that now we only have two points there. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, there we go. So now we should be back in business. Let's set our display flags back and take a look. Oh, it looks like I fixed it. Very nice. Yeah. So I just wanted to colorize those and add the, the torus knots up there. Makes it look a little cooler, a little more detailed. Let's um, now go and uh, save this here and go back to Unreal and we'll do a rebuild all instances. And this, this does happen every once in a while with uh, V2. We get this GLS running. I don't know. And so it's going to crash me. And we're back. All right, so um, let's go and test all this stuff out now. Everything's looking pretty good here. Let's grab this guy and move this over here. Yeah, it's still pretty speedy even with those knots still on. It's pretty cool. It's coming along quite nicely. I am digging it. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, I think everything's doing pretty good of the little knots there really add some detail so all right so i think the last thing i'm going to do in this video um is just to organize the uvs a little bit better and then um, i'll probably make some textures just with a quick so mixer nothing crazy and um, i'll probably show that in a later uh, video a follow-up video all right let's uh, move on to the next step All right, so I'm going to do the UV layout at the very end here. Um, just take note that if you had a lot of UV layout nodes, you know, in individual subnets here, it would actually be a drain on performance in your HDs will go a lot slower. The UV layout node is really um, heavy on performance. Uh, it, it really does take up quite a bit. And so I try to save it for the end. Sometimes I even add a you know, switch to toggle it on and off. Uh, so when you are ready to bake it out, at least you can toggle it on and, um, have you all your UVs laid out. So the first thing that we need to do here is I need to set up a grid. Uh, this is basically going to serve as my uh, UV layout uh, because I'm going to be using um, uh, a trim sheet uh, for this that I make in Quizzle Mixer. And so uh, I need to kind of divide this up uh, based on how I want to uh, split everything up. And so you can do this like as a manual process. You don't have to make this all procedural. Um, it's just really there to um, let you organize your UVs appropriately. So, all right, so let's uh, take care of this here. Um, let's take a look at the clip plane. I want to point this in the Z direction. So we get this guy split in half. Now I'm just going to keep all primitives here and turn on my wireframe on shader by doing shift W. And I think I'm going to move this up a little bit and then I'm just going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to move this down. So I'm basically, um, you know, creating the areas of my trim sheet where I'm going to have different woods and uh, a rope texture. 
And then I need something for the, the caps on the wood planks and on the posts. So they're all, those are all the different textures I'm going to need. Cool, so I split that guy up. So these are going to be different woods for here. So I'm going to do a wood for the post and a wood for the planks. And then I'm going to put my end caps here and the rope texture um, over here. Though we're actually going to need the rope texture to um, tile. So that means we can actually make another one of these here. And I'm just going to pull this guy all the way up here. We'll put the rope up there. Let me actually just move these guys and make it a little bit more even. Yeah, let's do this. Those end caps don't need to take up that much texture space. They're pretty small anyways. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so let's take a look at our prim numbers now. So what I'm going to do is blast away uh, prim 2. And then uh, let's put a 2 here. And I'll say delete and unselected. Well, actually, let's do a split. Sorry about that. So let's do a split because I do want to keep the other pieces. I just want to process prim two a, a bit differently. So let's split on two. There we go. And then let's copy one of these clip planes here. And I hit enter to show the gizmo. So this one, let's actually center it all back up and everything. This one needs to be on the extraction like so and uh yeah well i'll probably just put the caps over here like a little you know the you can see the the rings in the wood basically for the end caps and that means we'll have an open space or something over here all right so with that let's uh merge all this stuff together yeah Cool, so now we got all of our uh, individual shells created. All right, uh, one thing we're gonna have to do, currently, you'll notice that the clip node, um, if I were to turn on my point display here, it doesn't actually separate the geometry, right? And in order for this particular technique to work, uh, we need to actually separate uh, this geometry out here. Now this piece did, but there, there's a better way to do this. And also we, we need to generate some UVs here, so. I need to do a UV project and uh, we'll just feed that right in there. We just need to put in 90 for this guy. So yeah, so now I've generated UVs. And so what we want to do now is we want to associate certain UVs with a certain ID here. Notice that we have these primitive IDs. And we can actually clean these up a little bit better as well by doing a sort node down here. So if we do a sort, uh, let's just sort uh, by the Z direction. Yeah, so we have zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So now it's a little bit more in order there. And so we're going to use these particular IDs here to send different UV shells to different uh, islands, right? Think of these guys as little target islands that we want to send things into. So we're going to, have to do a bit of work here. So um, I'm actually going to bundle all this up into a subnet and we're going to call this our UV layout. Let's feed in the geometry. All right, we'll kind of walk through this. Uh, the first time you do this, it can be a little confusing, but um, once you do it once, uh, you get it. It's pretty easy after that. All right, so we got our sort node, and we have UVs set up for this, right? Um, I might actually, I'm well, I can leave it like that. We'll put the rope down here. I was going to drop down a UV transform node and flip it. So uh, negative, of y, negative 1 and y, we'll flip it. But yeah, then we'd have to recenter. It doesn't actually matter that much. You could change the pivot and everything, but this will be fine. So I'll just remember the texture needs to be this way. All right. Uh, you could also flip the geometry. So let's take care of this. So um, what I'm going to do is create a new for each uh, primitive here. This will separate out each primitive and then merge it back together, but the UV shells will be separated out which the uv layout node wants and also to make this work we need to assign an id now i just want to use the primitive numbers for the ids for these target islands here so i'm going to go and create this meta node i'm going to call this loop data like so and drop down a wrangle node here and i'll wire the loop data into the second one because this has the um, iteration attribute on it that i want to use all right so we'll say set island id like so 
and I'll set this, this needs to be a primitive attribute, and I'm going to call it I at target is equal to uh, detail, and we're going to get the input from one. We're going to get iteration, like so. There you go. Sorry, iteration. There we go. Um, it's been a long day. There we go. Cool. So now on each one of these guys, on the primitives, we have a target. And it just so happens that it's the same number as their primitive number. You could also have just used the primitive, but I just decided to do it this way. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's get the incoming geometry. So that'll be this input one right here. And let's put it down our null node. We'll say geo in. And then we will focus on just one part. So we'll do, I think, the planks first. And then we need a UV layout node. And we're going to hook up our incoming geometry and our UV layout. right? So this is basically um, how I want my UVs to be laid out. What goes in each of these islands we have, haven't actually set yet. But we set the IDs for the target. All right, so we have our geometry. So how do we do this? So let's start with the planks first. And um, let's go up a, a level here. So let's say, let's actually go back in there. Sorry, guys. Um, Let's say I want my planks to be in island one. All right, so all we need to do is go up to our planks over here. Oh, make sure we have UVs first off. Just make sure we check all this stuff. Very good. And all we need to do is uh, drop down a wrangle node. You can also do this with an attribute create node, but we're going to say set island ID. You know, this has to be a primitive and we're going to say I at target is equal to one. And that's all we need to do. All right. So if we were now to come back in here, uh, let's take a look at this node here. What I want is all those plank pieces to go into um, Island one. So uh, in order to do this, we need to go into the UV layout node rather than packing into rectangles here, which actually is working out pretty well, uh, but I want a little bit more control. And so um, I just set it to islands from second input, UV attribute is what we want. But we want to go up to this target assignment and we want to uh, set the target attribute to target, like so. And now, um, well, it looks like uh, all the geometry. So we need to go and set all that stuff up on each one of those because basically what's happening is we have a bunch of attributes on there and some of these guys. Yeah, so target, yeah, so the target got wiped out here. So that means that during that merge right up here, all those guys got screwed over. I don't see a one anywhere. Yeah. All right, so the posts, they're going to go into, let's go back in here and take a look. Turn on our primnums. They're going to go into two, so we can just... Uh, set that up appropriately here so i'm going to set this to two you can set, already see they're starting to move around so all these guys moved so the planks moved to, to one which is good right now all of these guys all the posts move to um, the second uv shell so hopefully you guys can see all this happening while i'm doing this so then the ropes all need to be in what was the id for it Let's check that again here. Zero. All right. So it looks like we have UVs for all that stuff. So let's set the UV shell or island target. So it's going to be zero. Let's take a look. Always make sure to save while you're doing this as well. Now those guys didn't seem to want to go. Let's go into, yeah, they went, it looks like they went up there. Let's make sure we have UVs on everything. So we got this guy. What is this one? Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. I didn't make the UVs for these ones. And we don't want to do normalized and we don't want to snap. I just want to leave it that way. These guys are not even set up either. Jeez. Oh, I do want length weighted, but not normalized. There we go. And let's do this one. Yeah, there we go. OK, 
Okay. So all those guys should have UVs now, which is good. The tie down, just check it out. Looks like I did those guys too. Yep. All right, so we set the island ID. There we go. So yeah, now they're all being placed down there, which is great. So almost there. Um, all the caps then. So this is where we're going to have to get a little bit fancy because all those, or those are all a bunch of different pieces up there. We're getting there though. So all the caps went over here. I want all these caps to go into a different one. Let's go back into the UV layout node. And set a few other things here. Uh, I'm going to do by island position in 3D. And we'll scale to match their positions. Actually, let's do, yeah, by island symmetry. That'll work just fine. Now well, we can do 90 degree rotations. Well, eh. There we go. Let's do 180 degree rotations. That'll be fine. What are all these guys up here? You can always find out if we just select the points and then go to, oh, it's all these guys. All right, so I finally got it sorted out. Um, and so I'm, I'm just gonna walk you through what I did. And um, this is a, a very slow operation. So we're gonna have to put in a switch node for it, but it does get all your UVs laid out for you. Um, so I'm just gonna put a output node here. So um, on the UV layout node, we need to turn on our island attribute. And the reason why I was getting all those rope pieces up here um, was because it just ran out of space. And it was because it was trying to spread all that stuff out. And some of these, you know, uh, rope UVs are really long. And so I need to stack them on top of each other, but I just want to stack just the rope pieces on, on top of each other and not, you know, all these other pieces. And so you can see now here I have my shells. I'm getting, you know, my caps where the caps need to go. I'm getting the, the uh, posts for the post wood and the planks for the plank wood and then the ropes for where the rope's going to go on the trim sheet. And so all I need to do now, um, and I'll probably do this off camera, but you'll be able to see it in the HDA, is just randomize and scale the UV shells a little bit differently um, after the UV layout operation. But in order to set this up, uh, what I did, let me jump up and show you guys. So on, on the ropes, I set the target uh, to zero and the island to zero. And that basically will send them to this particular shell down here, plus it'll stack them on top of each other. It treats it as one island, basically. Um, and then I have these two um, wrangles here. So for the first one, I just set all the, uh, the posts to two. And if you still want to spread all the shells out, use a negative one for the island attribute. And then what I did is I grouped all the patches, right? So those are all the, let's go up one. If I were to look at all my patches here, uh, those are all those patch pieces, right? So I want to have a different texture on those guys. And so um, that's what I did. So I just, on the patch group, I just sent them to a target of three and an island of one and uh, did the same thing here. And then I sent all the planks to target one and set those guys to a negative one so they laid out appropriately. And that gets me all these guys laid out into the shells appropriately. Now it's really slow, so you know we need to drop down a switch node. So when we're ready to bake, you know we turn it all on, basically. You can also accomplish that uh, with some UV transforms. It's a little bit more work, uh, but it probably speeds up, speed it up a little bit. I'll uh, test it out for you guys and see what happens. But that's how you do it with the UV layout node and just one UV layout node using a predetermined layout. All right, so just wanted to show that there. Um, so we should probably expose that stuff here. Let me actually go up here and make a UV folder. All this UV and make it collapsible and um, I'll just promote so let's just promote this switch here so I'll just do a alt little mouse click and we'll say layout UVs and layout UVs and we'll make it a toggle oops let's do a toggle and default is off cool so that should work just fine for us. Let's save this guy. And that pretty much does it uh, for this particular video. Got really long, so 
Hope you guys aren't too bored. There's lots of cool stuff in there. Um, we made a nice, cool little bridge for Houdini Engine version 2. So, uh, thanks so much.